Hi there, I'm Rebecca Ryan King and I want to talk about the tail sound today. Uh, you might have heard this, it is a child-friendly way, um, using a metaphor, to explain the phonological pattern of final constant deletion. Now, a lot of the times, um, the kids that come to us that have final constant deletion, they're usually around like three to four years of age and it is really hard to explain to them um, or to help them understand, hey, you're deleting the last consonant at the end of your word. So I've got a really fun little way to um, help kids understand what we're talking about. We want to explain this rule um, of when to use your tail sounds or to put this tail sound on the end in a way that's gonna make sense to children. And I've got a fun way to do it using animals. Now, I'm gonna show you my little fish here. And this is how I would probably explain it to my little one in front of me. Okay, can you see this animal here? He's my fish. Now, just like animals like the fish have a tail, so do some of our words. And we call them tail sounds and they're the sound right at the end. Now, if I took away this tail sound, this animal would look a bit different, wouldn't it? But it'd also sound a bit funny too if I didn't say that tail sound. He would sound like fi, and that doesn't make sense. Let me show you another animal. If I just showed you this, you might think, that doesn't look like a whole animal. He's missing his tail, and you're right. This is a sheep. Now, I said the tail sound there. There was a p sound on the end, sheep. But if I took this tail sound away, and I forgot to say the tail sound, it'd sound like she. And that's not right. A she isn't an animal. So um, I've got all these little, I've cut these up because these are actually puzzles, but I use this concept and I use this idea of a puzzle and I take, you know, pictures away, I'll take the tail sound away so that the child can see that, you know, something is missing, but I'm also trying to help them connect that um, a sound is missing too. And because a lot of children are familiar with animals and the names of animals, they can kind of click and make sense. Oh, okay. You know, when it loses this tail sound, it looks a bit different and it might sound a little bit different um, or funny um, or it just doesn't make sense. I kind of changed uh, some of those terms that I use. So um, these are really, really fun, these little puzzles. I've also stapled these together and I've made a flip book. So we will be flipping the animals. And um, if the child forgets the tail sound, I'll flip it up and I'll say, oh, you said now. That's, that doesn't make sense. What happened to his tail? And when I do usually put the tail sound on, I try to draw emphasis to what that sound is. You forgot the s sound. Mouse has a s tail sound. You forgot that one. Let me hear your s sound at the end. Mouse and I try to make sure that I point to this sound and really draw emphasis to this as this. So I hope you have fun, I hope you learned a new metaphor and even just a new way to talk to children when you're talking about final constant deletion and trying to help them understand uh, you know, the rule and what the point of what we're doing is. And often, this just might be one session um, just for the children to understand what a tail sound is and that sound at the end of the word. And I found that this can be a really nice lead into something like minimal pairs therapy. Um, I've done it with cycles as well. It's just sometimes kids need the rule before we just jump straight into therapy. They need us to explain it to them in a way that makes sense to them so they know what we're doing in therapy and why. Um, let me know if you have any feedback on this and if you want me to talk about another pattern. I love talking about patterns and making them really, really child friendly. So subscribe and leave a comment um, on what you want the next video to be.